Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. And this is the Sunday oh, Filler Fun Day episode. Take yeah. two. Take Yeah, we got so far, well, as far as saying, here's our card of the day. And then we realized we don't have a card of the day. No. Because it's Sunday. And it's a Kiki Weekly Sunday. It is a Kiki Weekly Sunday. But before, before we that, get to that, we that. want to talk about Patreon. Yes, Patreon, Patreon. We talked about it a few times now. Uh, I'm pulling up the show notes, but um, please, guys, check us out. Look at the Patreon. If it's something you're interested in, those pledge goals, consider it. You don't, like, we've said it before. You know how this goes. You don't have to. We're not asking for your money to line our coffers. <laughs> we just want to make this a solid yeah. podcast. <laughs> Co- coffers. How, you know, <laughs> how many times have you heard that in a day? Never. Um, yeah, right. guys, the Patreon stuff is there for those who feel the notion to donate to us. We'd greatly appreciate it, but you're not. We're not asking you to uh, directly. Yeah, if you don't feel like you can or you don't have the funds to, do not worry about it. We're going to continue to do yeah, this no matter yeah. what. Heck so. yeah, it's just fun. There's neat pledge goals that we'd like to do. We'd like to get to. Man, if someone, oh, if someone does the ten dollar one, oh man, we, you get to beat us at magic. Yeah, probably. It, which is what ten dollars <laughs> means. You just beat us at magic. There is probably. a there is a game, but the the notion is you're going to win it. Yeah. Um, we're not that good. No, I mean. We know some some things, and we should be good, but God, I'm so... St- if you play me in real life, I always, like, talk through all of the lines. And then choose the wrong one. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I choose the less good one. I like to bet. Okay, anyway. All that... More on that later, Meaning, guys. go check out our Patreon. Yeah, we do appreciate it. Uh, and hopefully, we'll get to hang out with you guys. That's yeah. really the goal for That'd it. Uh, build a community a little bit. We will have some Patreon-specific content and oh, giveaways yeah. once we get some following there. We are working um, up to that. You want to talk about the giveaway? The giveaway, yeah. Let's, let's do, do that. that. Um, we do have a giveaway right now uh, shared from Instagram to basically all of our other social media outlets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and what we're doing, we hit 300 followers on Instagram. Whoop, Woo! Whoop. Um, for the, <laughs> we're really excited about it, in yeah, all honesty. Cool. Um, we've actually overshot that goal a little bit. We're yeah. almost at 320 at the moment. We were a little, a little um, surprised. At least I was at how fast how we fast. got to 300. So that was really cool. Thank you guys yeah. for all of the support. And our partners. Um, Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, our partners, awesome. our sponsor, all of those people helped get us to where we are. Um, we're not very far into this. Not and so to, cool. to get to this point uh, is it's great. Neat. It's um, neat. As far as the giveaway goes, basically we have three cards mm-hmm. up for grabs, a lightning bolt, a path to exile, and a serum visions. All up for grabs on this giveaway. Uh, so three winners out of this. And all you have to do is follow us on Instagram and then subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, yeah. If you do both of those things, we'll get notifications to know who to give these out to. We will, uh, on the 14th? I'm not, I think you said I think the it's the 14th. It's, the... Um, it's a week from when it was originally yes. posted, which is Wednesday of this past week. Right. So uh, basically, it'll be this coming Wednesday that we'll be able to pick those winners uh, send those out. Send those cards out, mm-hmm. and we'll we'll post something about who won and all that stuff. Yeah, and then and we so can get you your, can know, you know, uh, we'll tag you in it and do all that yeah, stuff. We'll get your address or whatever. Exactly. You on whatever, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, it's no risk for you. No, no, no. This charge. is free. It's completely free. We'll send it directly to you, you free... uh, with a little thank you note for participating, most likely, and um, maybe a picture of our face. No, no, <laughs> you don't want to see that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> except most of them follow us on Instagram, which is <laughs> yeah where we post that um right. <laughs> but uh yeah so follow us on instagram subscribe to our youtube channel uh it is worth it we've got different content going in different places mm-hmm. now uh so you will get uh content that we think at least will be worthwhile to you guys sure, sure, uh, sure, sure. and if you don't think so leave us feedback we want to know yeah uh but all, all of that. that out of the way i think yes. uh we do have a kiki weekly for you this Sunday, indeed. Um, again, recommended by Proxy the Goat, uh, Man, who's doing the most guy. for all this. Uh, we really appreciate him. Um, and basically, what he wanted to know is he he wanted us to have a simple discussion mm-hmm. on Kiki Weekly, Kiki Kiki Jiki combo. Yes, why it was named after that? Why it's why so it was named after that? Um, so, do you want to? Yeah, sure. I could take it off. Um, so. To me, honestly, it's not so much Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker yeah. himself as what the combo is, uh, or what it replaced, we should say. Yes. Um, so it is the Splinter Twin combo. Originally, yeah. Yes. That's so, what it amounts to. Right. Um, you can combo Kiki Jiki with Pestermite or Deceiver Exarch 
or resto angel that's true or resto angel all three um to essentially make an infinite number of one of those yeah either pester my mm-hmm. disabler whatever it is and have them to swing and win yeah and <laughs> so like the way this combo works so basically they all give the same sort mm-hmm. of mechanic so i'll just right. pick one say pester might when it enters the battlefield you pick another permanent either tap or untap that permanent mm-hmm. and so what you do is you have kiki jiki out um play your pester might kiki jiki does uh what? kiki jiki right. good good it copies a non-legendary creature and gives it haste that turn. So it gives a token of that creature, a separate token of that creature onto the battlefield under your control, and it gains haste. Yeah. So what you do is with Kiki Jiki... And you have to tap to do that. That's important. You do. You have to tap it. You tap the Kiki Jiki. I keep mm-hmm. saying Kiki Jiki, and it's messing me up. Um, <laughs> you tap it to copy the Pestermite Deceiver Exarch Resto Angel. Uh, when the copy comes into play, mm-hmm. you get the enter the battlefield trigger, which says untap or tap target permanent. You untap the Kiki Jiki yep. and then keep doing it. Um, you get an infinite number of these things. They yep. all gain haste. You swing for infinite damage. Yep. Um, it was notably the Splinter Twin deck right. uh, dominated modern for True. quite a while to the point where they had to ban Splinter Twin. Yeah. Um, Kiki Jiki is still... Uh, legal and modern and it is actually played in kiki chord decks things like that uh with some infinite combos in there yeah um which is awesome right i mean it's a very cool cool. deck any kind of infinite combo or like unlosable unlosing you can't lose if you get it i don't know what the word is unbeatable (laughs) god bill the unbeatable combos are fun to pull off yeah um so some reasons i guess i think that this is still legal um splinter twin was just way too fast yeah, right. so Splinter Twin itself is a four drop. Yes, it was an enchantment. And an yes. enchantment, yes. Um, that basically was Kiki Jiki's effect. Mm-hmm. Um, but at four, Kiki Jiki is, correct me, six? Uh, it's either five or six. I honestly don't know. I, I don't right remember off the, off the top of my head. I think it's three red and three colorless, but it might be I, two You might colorless. be right. I'm not sure. But yeah, it is more know. expensive, which is the key. Right. It's also harder to cast because mm-hmm. of the three red. Uh, yes. Splinter Twin having two red and two colorless. So it's a little bit easier and cheaper. And it is a creature <laughs> dies to way more things. Yes. Um not um not bolt, right? He's not bolt. He's talking um, about bolt. Or is he uh, honestly, I don't know. Well, who knows? I, We're saying I all don't kinds play, of weird things. Yeah. I mean, so the thing about why Splinter Twin was so good was because you could flash in uh something mm-hmm. like Deceiver X Arc on turn three because it was a three drop and then on turn four go off with the Splinter Twin. Right. Um so. because Kiki Jiki costs more. You're just not able to do that. Right. You can't get to it as consistently. <clears throat> um, so, like we said, it's not been banned yet. No. I don't see it getting banned. It's not going to get um, banned. It's not as consistent, of no, course. not nearly um, as consistent. But Splinter Twin broke the meta in every... <laughs> yes. Pretty much everywhere it was played. You didn't see it in Vintage that much. I don't no, think, I mean, but... Vintage Legacy, it's not as popular. Uh, right. It's just not fast enough. Right. But Modern is the one that it really broke. Yeah, it, uh, broke it just Modern in half. So many of the decks, when you'd go to or see coverage of a Grand Prix or coverage of a Pro Tour, it was all Splinter Twin. Um, yeah, I mean, with and, some other decks in there, but it just took over, right? Yeah, it but, was like the birthing pod days back in the day. <laughs> true, but rightfully so. Yeah. Like, just like Copycat in Standard. Yeah. Like, if you have, if you basically get to break the rules of Magic, yeah, play this unbeatable thing. Why you know, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would feel like you feel kind of like, oh, you you kind of suck for playing that, but why would you but not play in a it? competitive environment? Yeah. when you are when winning is part of the battle, and it's not just about having yeah, fun. It's then not making a fun brew. You kind of have to go for it, right? Like yeah. that's your best chance, and, and that's and that's kind of <clears throat> why they're shaking up standard, why they're kind of remaking that. Is yeah. they they don't want to feel like you have to play this deck to be competitive. Exactly, and that's why they they want more variety, twin, right? Yeah. Back in the day, um, but yeah, so. For any of those out there who might be wondering why we named this segment the Kiki Weekly, um, Kiki Jiki and any number of these other cards, mm. uh, that that was one of the be- the most well-known, I guess, uh, notorious yeah. combos in the sure. modern format. 
And so that's why we thought it, it was also just a silly tagline. Yeah. I thought it was really funny. Kiki Jakey's fun to say. Kiki yeah. Weekly kind of rolls, rolls off the tongue. It does. It does. So yeah. just a quick discussion overview of it. Um, we may go back at some point and do, you know, pre-band Splinter Twin as a deck tech oh, in modern. Oh, God. Um, which I think is a really interesting thing to talk about because anytime you get into bandings, you get into some some gray area. Some people agree, some people don't. And so to talk yeah. about some of those decks a little bit, I'd love to meet someone who doesn't really cool. agree with a Splinter Twin band. Oh, I would too. It'd be hilarious. But <laughs> yeah, they would be an interesting person. Hey, if you don't, now that we've said that, <laughs> let us know why. Let us know why. Um, I've ne- I've never heard an argument for. So I'm being. So kind of sarcastic but honestly i'm curious <laughs> yeah i would be actually curious because i've never really heard anybody mm-hmm. who they were like dang splinter twins gone yeah G-darn. you know like it's like dang birthing pod's gone oh, or infect darn. isn't as good man hate that <laughs> like who misses it well i kind of miss infect i mean but... infect is still a good deck but the original like blazing shoal Ooh, infect oh, was just man. too dirty you want on turn two or three like immediately and um, you can with other infect, yeah you absolutely can you gotta but have it's, a perfect hand it's not as good in the no. meta right now and no, so that's not. why but it's not i would love to hear some people's thoughts on that as would i <laughs> as would i okay the, all that out of the way it is a filler fun day so we have a random topic picked by kevin and i yeah um, most, well, yeah maybe a little informative maybe a little not well Whatever. these are meant to be just fun discussions where hopefully yeah. we want we get to hear Basically, you guys listen to what we have to say. If you agree or disagree, we want to know about it and talk about sure. that. This is the discussion topic, really, is what we're thinking okay. of this as. So, um, what's the topic today? My man, we're talking about card advantage. One of the most important things in Magic, I think. Yeah, you hear it probably if you've ever turned in, tuned in, I should say, to watch a Pro Tour or a Grand Prix or whatever. You hear the caster, LSV, Brian David Marshall, whoever mm-hmm. it is, talk about card advantage. Oh, he's getting card advantage. She's got card advantage. Mm-hmm. Well, what does that mean, man? Yeah, so... What the heck? Card advantage is pretty simply just being up on cards, yep. drawing cards, or uh, basically drawing cards is really what it amounts to. And the, the most obvious uh, sort of instance of gaining card advantage are your simple cantrip cards, yeah. things like preordain, seer and visions in modern. A lot of these things you you gain a card by playing them. Right. Um, and that's all that means is getting up a card and that hopefully gives you more answers or more win conditions mm-hmm. in the future turns and things right. like that. So now it's in- there's an interesting distinction. Not all the cantrips are card advantage. You're correct. Right. So you play a seer and visions, you play a brainstorm, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Not all of these, like ponder comes to mind. Yes. Ponder is a well-known cantrip. It's a great one. I love Ponder, but it's not card advantage, even though you draw a card. Now, why? So you have to play Ponder to get that new card. It's simple it's arithmetic. It's replacing itself. Exactly. It's just switching a thing, even though you can set up some draws. Yes. Which is almost pseudo... It's pseudo card advantage. Right. It's the scry effect, basically, right. where you get to set up your mm-hmm. next few draws. <laughs> But because they're not in your hand and usable mm-hmm. at that time, it's not technically card advantage, but right. it's basically as close as you can get. Right. Um, so, yeah, that is the most basic form of card advantage, is yeah. getting more cards. Um, I mean, this effect is in every format. Mm-hmm. It goes kind of goes without saying, but even in limited, mm-hmm. people draft divination for a reason. Yeah. And it divination being one of the worst card draw spells. But in limited, it works it's, out. Yeah, it's, you know, 40-card deck. Uh, draw two cards for three not bad yeah honestly it's really not bad um and it's also worth noting too i mean again we're we're harping on the cantrips as the easiest example of this sure but there are so many other ways to get card advantage um for instance in black if you play modern or even legacy uh dark confidant one of the best cards. Is one of the best card advantage I know we say that engines. a lot, but honestly, it is one of the best cards. Yeah, it's it's an engine for card advantage. It gives you an extra card mm-hmm. every single turn. It's the Phyrexian Arena effect where mm-hmm. you get an extra card. All of these cards do the exact same thing uh, by giving you this card advantage, right. but they do it on a more consistent basis than a cantrip uh, where you're literally every turn going to be getting an extra card. Um, yeah. And that's just... that's exactly what you want from a card advantage engine uh like dark confidant or yeah. something like that you need the engine not just the singular card to get you there right and there there are way more not just dark confidant <laughs> um 
you get things Jason like... Jason Mindsculptor. Of course, yeah. A lot of Planeswalkers <laughs> net you card advantage. They're an engine for that, you say. Um, there's a few Planeswalkers come to mind that you just play simply to get card advantage. Yeah. Um, you, I guess, could play Mind Sculptor like that, even though he's got Architect more... Architect of Thought is a good one. That's exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, Jace Bellerin is Bellerin's another probably one. one of the best examples. Probably, yeah. Three-drop um, Planeswalker that I don't know if anyone's ever opened. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, tons of engines out there, and almost every <laughs> color gets it. Green doesn't as well. Harmonize. Um, yeah, that's your simple draw card spells, but but yeah, it doesn't get the best engines right. or anything. But like even that. even red gets it in its looting effects, and you have to pitch cards. I will to say, get some. looting, um, pure oh, looting is See, not card that. advantage. Yeah. Um, where you draw a card and then have to discard a card, you're not up a card at the true, end of that. True. It's not actual card advantage. And, uh, even just that being that. said, though. Uh, things like uh, Tormenting Soul, something like that, where you discard a card and yeah. this card and then draw a couple cards. Mm -hmm. um, probably not that one, but Cathartic Reunion, I guess, would be the best example. Yes, um, that one. turns more into card advantage because you're drawing three cards and, and pitching, pitching two, two right. or something like that, if, yeah, I'm, that's it. if I'm not mistaken. That's so, it, yeah, pitch two, draw three. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it it becomes card advantage, theoretically. Right. Um mm -hmm. But again, it's a more looting effect yes. where you're having to pitch these cards to get more. And so in that instance, you're hopefully helping your hand, which is really what you want yeah. from those. Uh, but it's not necessarily card advantage. So there, there's a fine line there that is worth noting. And I that would say. gets confused. It does get apparently. confused a lot. Um, that being said, drawing cards simply, that's not the only way to no. net card advantage. Like Think of it as... It, as basic as it gets more cards <laughs> mm -hmm. so other cards that let you do that um a course of crucifix comes to mind yeah so uh if you are out of lands you can play a card from the top of your deck if it's a land yep now you would never get to play that again like on your upkeep because that happens before draw correct me if i'm wrong yes i yes. believe so you effectively could get to play one more card a turn yeah Right. It's basically the amount of cards that you have available to you, and if you're increasing that number in you, some way, if you that's have, your card advantage. If you have more than your opponent, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you, if let's say in some crazy world you've played two serum visions back to back, you and your opponent, mm -hmm. no one has card advantage at this point except for the person who's on the draw. Right. That turn. Yeah. Right. Because you have the same number of cards. Yeah. Um. So card advantage <clears throat> is a way of getting ahead, I guess. Ahead on opponent. cards that are open to you mm -hmm. to use. And that's why I think a deck like, uh, not necessarily something you'd think of as card advantage, but a deck like Dredge, where oh, no, I was, their entire yeah. graveyard becomes playable to them. <laughs> um, you're up so many cards at that point. Like, uh, I was, you drown the other player in card advantage at that point. One of the points I was I was going to make is that <laughs> your hand isn't the only spot you uh, exactly. generate, or I guess accrue card advantage. Accrue card advantage, yeah. Um, and Dredge is the perfect example Exactly. Of that. Um, on the board, all of your permanents become card advantage. If you have more things, yeah. even if they are worse things, technically you have card advantage technically yeah no you i mean you absolutely do yeah. um even if you're playing yeah five mountains and they have five man lands or excuse me four man lands mm -hmm. you're up on mana you have you have some card advantage in, yeah in, in that respect there. yeah sure um if you've if they've got one two two you've got three one ones you've got card advantage mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, just I mean that's a good board. way to look at it. it. You can call it different things, but yeah, you you can. Right? I mean, board advantage versus sure. Land, you, there's all different, different terms board, for it, but state. it all sort of boils down to this philosophy: who has more of usable things? Who's got the things? Yeah, and the um, graveyard is a great place to store them. It's kind of like a bank. It is for some decks. For some, some decks, decks, a reanimator deck, a dredge deck. Yeah. That's what they want to use. Um, you know, you get a Gristlebrand turn mm. one in your graveyard with Entomb or something like that. Yeah. You're suddenly up a lot over the other player. Yeah. Um, and the other thing to think about too, and you touched on this, pure card advantage is just the number of things that you have available to you. Right. Um, but thinking about actual board state advantage, thinking of you know playability and things like that. You have to look at the quality of the cards that you have because, um, I mean, sure. and this is getting a little off topic from just a pure card advantage standpoint. But if you look at you know your hand full of seven lands versus your opponent filled with you know <laughs> yeah. only four relatively you know impactful spells, sure, 
you're you're up in card advantage right. technically, but are you winning? You're not winning. Um, right. and so card advantage is something that you should utilize. Uh, to an extent, I think is sort of the takeaway. It's always something you want is card advantage, but you have to leverage when you actually have the advantage based on what's in your hand. Well, yeah, or so something I, like that. I, I guess I'm I'm beating around the bush. No, on no, that no, a no, bit. no. I think you made a good point. Um, you want to leverage when you have it. So yeah. if you think back to our aggro principles episode, uh, knowing when you're ahead is big. Knowing yeah. when you can press them and make them have answers is big. Uh. One of the realms, I guess, or times that you're strongest in that thought <laughs> is when you're up on cards. Um, for an aggro deck, you aren't usually. Yeah. I'll say. Yeah. Um, but in a tempo matchup, mm-hmm. if you are holding more spells than they are, you have more answers to their things. Yeah. So you get to be a little more reckless, a little more aggressive, per se, if you're yeah. playing like uh, the Azorius tempo that's in standard right now. Um if you're holding some white removal or some blue counters, you can maybe play a little, little yeah. fast and loose. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also think it's worth noting too, uh, the formats that every format cares about card advantage, mm-hmm. but one of the most important formats for something like this would be vintage or legacy. Um, the sure. reason I say that is because uh, the fine, the, the amount of tuning that goes into the decks that are in these eternal formats like this is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> you have true. a very specific number of land slots and there is no variance. Yeah. Um, you have a specific very, number very. of creature slots and there is no variance, mm. spells, etc. And so when you're up in card advantage in a, like a vintage match, that means a lot more than if you're up in card advantage in a standard match. Not saying either one's... I, I'm not saying standard isn't important, Okay. but yeah. I just want to point out that in vintage or something like that, you value card advantage probably more so than in other formats. Sure, I guess that's fair because um, you need to expect so many things. You right? do when you're expecting things like force of will, <laughs> yeah. mental misstep, all these free spells that are going to fight over your stuff. You need to be able to fight back. Yeah, and so that's to fair. be able to pull an extra force of will gives you an extra step in the fight, uh, which true. could be the point of I win. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you get to stick your win con, you just mm-hmm. win in a vintage yeah. match. So that's the important thing to think about. Sure. I think there is where card advantage means more uh, versus, you know, maybe a little bit less. It's always important, but just yeah, something you're right. to think about. You're right. Um, <clears throat> so let's transition to phase three. Okay. Why, why does it matter? How will it help me win? What does all that mean? So I think of it, if you're playing in a magic match, you can think of it like this. Think of it, you're both trying to climb a ladder, two different ladders. Yeah. You can each climb one rung at one time, draw one card at one time. Unless you get to say, I'm climbing a little I'm climbing a little bit faster. And get an extra rung in there. Get an extra rung. I like know. it. That's you're a just, good illustration. I think so. I'm really proud of you. Oh, thanks, man. I'll wow. Pat myself on the back. Uh, cookie for Will. Good job. Okay. <laughs> cookie for Will. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so there are... When you think about decks to build, if you're trying to brew something out there, um, this is always something that you need to consider, is can your deck survive without some kind of card advantage? Um, That doesn't necessarily mean a draw spell. Like if you're playing a green deck, you get things like um, a collected company. Mm -hmm. You get to play free things. Is that card draw? Not technically, but... But it can get you that card advantage. Of course, of course. So can my deck survive without it? A deck like a red deck wins deck, probably can yeah in so much that every top deck they want to just slam on the board and start yeah. swinging at face right yeah so there are some decks that can survive without it some that some that won't kevin what are some that you think would just shrivel without some kind of card i advantage? mean the first thing that comes to mind is a general control deck sure um control decks want to have all of the answers and they mm-hmm. use these cantrips or these draw spells especially to get to mm-hmm. all of these answers. Um, again, mentioning in Vintage, Force of Will, and things like that. Right. They don't do anything in your deck. You need them in your hands, so you need to give yourself the ability to gain that card advantage mm-hmm. to hopefully get these into your hand and then be able to fight over whatever you need to fight over. Yeah. Um, and that's the key behind a control deck, really, is the card advantage. Uh, tempo decks are the same way again sort of in line with a control deck but a little bit different and that yeah. they're just trying to tempo things out not necessarily counter everything yeah, slow you know? down the early players yeah and, slow the right. early plays do that sort of a thing um and it, again a deck like dredge 
is a card advantage deck, right? right? Like that's all it really is at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so those are sort of just a few that come to mind first and foremost. Okay. I had a point I was going to make. It was a good point, I bet. I thought it was. Apparently it wasn't and good I enough. I forgot it. I guess not. <laughs> um, so. Storm. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, oh, Jesus. Considering Storm. <laughs> what do you want to say about Storm and card advantage? Buddy? I mean, I don't know. Playing Storm free things? Free, yeah. Storm is just, let's Aww. do free things and it be doesn't, awesome. It doesn't really count, but it's, no, but it's, it's still nice. It, Storm has a lot of one for one draws yeah. where it's just replacing itself. Um that I, being said I remember my point. Sorry. Um true storm decks using in modern things like past in flames where mm. they get the graveyard access oh, yeah. or uh in legacy or vintage where they use Yogmoth's will to get the ability to play things from the graveyard, mm. that's technically card advantage. I mean, you play a past in flames and all of a sudden your entire graveyard becomes active for you. You just gained the ability to play, you know, yeah. eight, ten cards, you're up on cards at that point. I mean, right. you have to be, you know. Yeah, no, so, no, yeah you um, absolutely are. In that respect, you get quite a lot mm-hmm. of card advantage out of a Storm deck. Right. So, I remember my thing. Oh, good. Speaking about why it matters, um, you can think of magic as sort of, I know I have a lot of uh, analogies, but this is a little more concrete. Um, if you think of it as a numbers game, mm-hmm. and I've said this before, uh, we are slaves to the randomness of our decks after we shuffle it yes. to what we draw, right? So you could draw, wow, impressive. <laughs> you could <laughs> Kevin just popped his neck, just <laughs> uh, sorry, that threw me off. You could My draw, <laughs> you could draw theoretically seven lands, right? Yeah. You could draw theoretically seven permanents. I've done it before. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. Like... Yeah, the best and the worst. That is the equalizer. <laughs> the top of the deck is the equalizer. Yeah. Um. So. Any element, any tool that helps you cut down that randomness and get to your combo piece, your win con, that is valuable, and that plays into card advantage. Yeah. Um, we talked before, moments before, about brewing a deck. Um, you don't have to include a draw spell in a deck, so you don't have to splash blue to get up on card advantage. Um, <coughs> green, like we said, does it best by playing free things. Yeah. So that's cool to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's why it matters, man. Yeah, um, it's just something when you are building decks or uh, when you're considering what decks you're going to play against, you want to know uh, that card advantage is an important aspect of every deck, uh, regardless of where you're playing or what format you're playing. And yeah. you need to be able to plan for either your opponents trying to gain the card advantage aspect on you sure. or you trying to gain it on them. Mm-hmm. Um, again, if you're playing like a red deck wins, card advantage is just something you probably aren't even going to think about. Yeah. You're just trying to win right. as quickly as possible. But um, in a lot of the mid-range to late game decks, control decks, things like that, card advantage is the most important tool uh, in the toolbox for a deck like that. So I, I, got a, I, got a, I got a thought question for you. Thought-provoking, okay. thought provoking, stimulating question. question. I'm not good at those. You shut up. You totally are. <laughs> All right. So... I don't know the right answer to this, but I think I do. Okay. In what world, since card advantage is so important, if I'm holding like, I don't know, Swan Song, Mm -hmm. for instance, something I have to pay for, not mental misstep, Mm -hmm. would you ever consider countering a cantrip for card advantage? Uh, Yes. Um, Okay. Here's, so the obvious thing in this instance would be like, if it's the only card left in their hand, counter it immediately. Um, because they're just going to be top decking at that point. If they don't get another draw spell, they're just out of the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can 100% steal a game that way. Less so uh, if you're against a combo deck, for instance, Mm -hmm. and they only have a minimal number of cards in their hand, what you can force out of them is a counter spell. So, for instance, if you are set up to basically go off next turn or win the game next turn, they play a Brainstorm, okay? They've only got another one or two cards in hand. Okay. If you have a couple counter spells in hand, you can decide to fight over that cantrip. And what I mean is they play Brainstorm. On the stack, you put your counter. If they have a counter and they're trying to get to their win con, they will counter it. Yes, and that's and that's how you know. That's right? how you know that they're still searching for that. You can read into some of these counters and these plays, especially sure. in, a, in a format like Vintage. Um and then if you have an extra counter spell, counter it. If you don't, that's fine. They wasted their counter spell. And hopefully if they do not draw their win condition, 
you just basically got the tell that they don't have much in their hand and you can True. go for it. True. Um, so you can gain some knowledge just from countering and going, you know, sort of fighting over some of these cantrips. Mm -hmm. You have to do it at the right time. If they have okay. seven cards in hand and you counter a cantrip, it's probably not the best time to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's um, a good point. It's it, because you're not going to gain anything from that. Like they're either going to fight over it or they're just not going to care and they're just going to let it resolve and that's fine. It sure. will resolve. It resolves. <laughs> it resolves. Weird how that works. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like we did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's a magic term or something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think there are plenty of options for when you should counter it. Okay. Uh, but it, you really have to, d it, it depends on the state of the game at that point. Right. That's a lot of the mind game point, which yeah. is a topic for another episode, but there's... That is a yeah. whole other topic. Right. But yeah. Uh, with the thought that magic is supposed to be a little bit like poker mm -hmm. and a little bit like a board game at the same time, that mind game stuff comes into it. Being yeah. Made. I mean, it's partially based on luck, but at the same time, right. it's also based on the strategy and knowing what, what these tells are as you go through the yeah. game. And sure. so being able to gain information is sometimes worth losing a card over. Right. Um, and again, especially in a format like vintage where yeah. the, the line of play matters so much more. Sure. Um, it's, there's a lot of stuff you can fight over there. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, so I would say in summary, uh, in summation, yeah, Swan song, it if you need to. Yeah. Depending on the situation. I don't know why you would run Swan Song necessarily. But. Well, it was just one I thought of. Like, <laughs> not mental misstep. Because you could... Because you can free cast uh, Yeah, you absolutely would want to. But, yeah. like, if they cast Ponder Turn Well, one, and that's yeah. another thing, too. Um, if they're casting a... Most of these cantrips, the valued cantrips, are one co you know one yeah. mana to cast. Something like Ponder, Brainstorm, uh, yeah. Preordain. A lot of them are one casting costs and so a mental misstep if you've got it go ahead counter it because yeah. you might as well like if they fight over it fine if they force of will your mental misstep or they mental misstep your mental misstep that just means you get a cantrip next turn that they're not going to be able to fight over um sure. you know so like mm -hmm. and they're down two cards you're they're down two cards you're down one mental right. misstep which right is really just going to be served to counter another cantrip. So so it's Honestly. probably worthwhile to do it in that sense. But again, that's a specific card. So you have to think about that a little bit differently. But yeah. Okay. I like that. Um, it was something to consider. Yeah. Um, tying it again, I guess, into the back of the episode. Or sorry, not the back of the episode. The aggro principle <laughs> of the episode in last week. <laughs> I say weird things. Um, uh, it goes kind of back to killing the elves. And killing the <laughs> engines. Yeah. Right? So you can talk about countering, but you want to path the um, dark confidants yeah. of the world. Yeah. You want to... The coursers of the world. The engine... That's... Like, that's why Dark Confidant, Jace the Mind Sculptor, these cards are so good. is they because get you to you, win. You get Faster. the card advantage immediately. Right. Um, that's why you always deal with it. And that's why the the running joke being if you play a Jace the Mind... Or if your opponent plays a Jace the Mind Sculptor, you just lost. <laughs> like, <laughs> you might have. Yeah. Like, if you don't have an answer to it, yes, you did lose. It doesn't <laughs> say on the card anywhere that you just win. <laughs> but I'm gonna say it sort of does. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pump the brakes on that one a second. Not, I'm just saying it's a running joke. I'm not saying it's always true. That's definitely not. But they just paid. All right. I'm just telling everybody, if I'm you going, just got Jace, you just lost. I'm going full swing out here okay. against Jace for a second. All right. So you're telling me that on turn four, yep. if they played a Planeswalker, yep. that at worst is going to keep me a land on top of something? Mm-hmm. Depending on what's in my hand, I just lost a game. But Potentially, if you don't have an answer for a few turns, yes, sure. It's it is a problem. It's a huge problem. But that's four mana they've invested in. You know, maybe I keep someone off of something, right? I, the thing about Jace specifically yeah. is, on one hand, if your opponent, if you play a Jace and your opponent doesn't have an answer, you are if you use it in the card advantage engine way. You're now up an extra card every turn. Sure, yeah. That's which big. is great, right? That yeah. In that style deck, which is the blue control -y deck, sure. um, that gives you the answers to anything your opponent's going to do. Maybe. That's the point. Maybe. It, the maybe. There's right. the luck aspect, but that's the idea. Right. If you play Jace, and this is getting off of the card advantage engine. That's fine. This is getting on the fate sealing well, side of well, it. What is it, though? Well, a little bit. I mean, 
I see what depends you're saying. Depends on how you look at it. it depends right. on how you look at it. But if you're fate sealing your opponent and giving them just lands every turn, mm. uh, if they don't have much of an answer in their hand, then yeah, you just lost the game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but what if they're holding <laughs> Banefire or something crazy? Then they can kill it. But yeah, they can at kill that you. point, if you're gaining cards every turn, things mm. like that, you can Banefire, go for it. But they're going to have answers to everything else that you do, Maybe. is the idea. Right. That's right. the goal behind Jace. I'm not saying it's a perfect plan. The reason but I'm I, saying the reason it's a I bring really good plan. The reason I bring all this stuff up is I am, I get Jace is strong. I get He's the best planeswalker. He is probably the best, although Ka- the best. Karn just gets to delete him, is all I'm saying. Um, and there's <laughs> no, a turn seven, unless you're no, playing Tron. I was going to say, there's a reason Tron doesn't run Jace. Well, there's a reason Tr- is Karn, Karn isn't Karn. banned in Modern and Jace is. Well, yes, there is. <laughs> You're right. But but I just, I don't think he's the best. Well. I think he's the best Planeswalker. I don't know. Jury's out, man. Is it? <laughs> no, not really. We're going to poll everybody. <sighs> we'll I mean, set up a poll I know. I know I'm in the smaller camp. I'm just not as afraid of a Jace as I am of something that he gets rid of my stuff. That's all. Okay, that's all I'm saying. I'm just saying, we'll play Dex. You play Karn. I'll play Jace. Let's see who. Am wins. I building Tron? Because I will. You add... can build Tron. Absolutely. All right. Can I build whatever I want? If Jace is your win con, yes. Okay. Sweet. We'll make that happen. I'm fine with that. Dope. We'll put it up on Patreon. We'll shake on it right now. All right. You can't see this. We are shaking. We're shaking on it. I promise. I can't wait to exile your Jace. Good luck. It's gonna feel it's good. It's gonna be great. It's gonna if feel it works. good. It'll work most of the time. We'll see. There's Ugin. We'll see. This is gonna be great. There's Ugin. There's So you're Karn. getting Ugin and Karn. I'm building Tron. That's fine. Because Ugin's also a planeswalker. Yeah. Buddy oh boy. Yeah. He's not as good as Jace, I don't think for sure. Um Solely I don't because think he costs so. like eight. Yeah. It's a I little ridiculous. He's great, but I don't think he's. No, he's definitely way too slow unless you just get to cheat him out. And I'm not saying like cheat him, like cast him with Tron, yeah, like yeah. put a permanent on the field. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. Right. Um, he's good in certain matchups, way better than Jace. But well, sure. Jace sure, all sure, around sure, sure, is sure, just sure. better. He's a better utility. Jace is the engine that makes a lot of decks work in Legacy and Vintage. I'm just telling you. Name anyway. Three. Mentor, okay. any control deck ever. I'm gonna. No, is it? Am I wrong? Yeah. How on. am I well, wrong? Not, not any control deck. Grixis control runs Jace the Mind Sculptor in Legacy. Yes, I would expect so. As its engine, though. As, as a card draw engine or a fate seal engine? Yes. Oh well, yes. As that. absolutely. You said like the engine. It's not the engine. A it's card just advantage a engine one. in a control deck is the engine of the control deck. <laughs> we did just talk about that. We literally we? just said that. We did. We did. I mean, I'm just telling you. All I'm saying <laughs> is he is not as scary as people okay. say. That's well, it. we'll see when you That's lose. All. That's all, all right. I'm saying. Main topic out of the. We finally got on a tangent. It took us a while. We on did, this one. but this is one that you're <laughs> this passionate. Is a good one. This is one you're passionate about. And the magic community is passionate about. And yeah. I just think it's funny to poke the bear. Well, the bear's the bear gonna fate seal Jace. you into a lose. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm already holding Karn. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Plus, I, there's so many ways to shuffle your deck in Tron. You got your fetch. Lines. We're moving on. We're moving on. <laughs> you got your expedition map. <laughs> anyway. All right. Card advantage off the table now. We'll play some casual Jace games and maybe talk off about the it. Table. Uh, anyway, right, um, right. we got to finish up this episode with the Crack a Pack series sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles in Rock Hill, South Carolina, just Ooh, south nice. of Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, we want to thank him. Clamp over there has done a lot for us, uh, helping us out with these Crack a Packs, providing us with some packs to do this. Uh, go check them out. They're working on a website right now with an online store. Yes. Yeah, so if you are not in the Charlotte area, <laughs> you'll be able to shop with them very, very soon. Dig They're working on that literally jar. as we speak. Um, on top of that, uh, they do a lot of Pokemon events right now. Uh, I know this is more focused on magic, but if you are into the Pokemon TCG Just stuff, by chance. Uh, they do a lot of box breaks, which you can qualify for online. You can just go in and say, I want all of these cards of a specific color, buy into it. They will send you those cards no matter where you are. 
Um, on top of that, they do a lot of ba- uh, box battles yeah. uh, where they see who got the best packs, things like that. Those are more in-store. So if you are in the area, I would recommend checking them out. They are a lot of fun. I'm not into Pokemon TCG. Neither am um, I. But uh, they're fun to just hang out with. They got a lot of oh, a lot of very nice people that hang out there while they do these uh, and some people that participate. So you get to see how I, that goes. I honestly don't even know how it's played. Pokemon. How Pokemon TCG? Yeah. I learned a long time ago. Um, it would take me a few, a little bit to pick it back up. But I, uh, no it's, idea. I don't like it that much, no. to be honest. I think I've watched a match on like YouTube or something just yeah. out of curiosity. It's but cool. I really didn't understand it. I just like Magic more. There is sure. honestly, there's nothing wrong with Pokemon TCG. No, I think it's I'm a sure fine it's, game. It's I'm actually sure it's picked fun. up quite a lot in recent years, which is yeah. great uh for just the tcg community and pokemon itself uh so if you are into that go check them out again grand slam in rock hill south carolina awesome guys clamp and uh a few others over there that are very very nice guys tell them it resolves sent you yeah tell them it resolves sent you kevin let's crack these things well we already did that but let's talk about (laughs) it um we're still on the hunt for our goal cards getting into the trials is mine combat celebrant is mine we didn't, neither one of us he got him. slippery. Yeah, I mean, they're both mythics. Yeah, We're not expecting to get them immediately. No, you're right. Well, I was. I don't know about you. Oh. Oh. Nah, I, I aim for the stars <laughs> here. I, was, I have high hopes. Aim for the sun. You'll see why in a minute. Oh, Jesus. All right, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to crack it and just talk a little bit about it um, in a limited sense as well, mm-hmm. I guess. So my rare was Honored Hydra. Uh, the Trampler for six, one green, five color, six, six with Embalm for four. Interesting Embalm card. I like this. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> the Embalm is cheaper. It's I, just interesting. Yeah, no, I really like it. I like it because let's say you do put it out on turn six, but then you lose them. Like next turn you get your six, six back and then something else. Exactly. Because you would have, you know, you would have netted two extra mana. Yep. Um, which I think is interesting. So there's times when you want to pitch him in your graveyard and then embalm him out. There's times when you want to hold on to him as your bomb and just play him at six. Um, it also does really well against cards like Unburden, where you have to discard cards yeah, in a limited definitely. environment. You just discard this and then you get to play it. Definitely. <laughs> like, you don't feel bad at all great. about <laughs> yeah, discarding your things. It's great. Uh, it honestly might be my pick. Other considerations are Trial of Ambition. A great trial. It's. I think it's probably the best. Um, it's very good. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent sacrifices a creature for one colorless, one black. When a cartouche enters it, you can return it to your hand. Um, trial of Knowledge would be a little bit more on theme for today's episode. Though. Probably. But uh, yeah, I do also think very the good, one but is good. Ambition is awesome. Well, I don't know. If you think about it, you played a card, <laughs> now they're down a card. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you play one card or draw three. I know, no, I know. <laughs> trial of Knowledge. I'm just I saying, mean, this is also a bit. Yeah, it's very good. Um, but it's great removal in limited, especially. Um, but I do think Honored Hydra, if you're just considering hitting that board... A very, Swing in your hydras. A good limited pick. Your damage. I mean, it's awesome. Uh, six six for six is good, or potentially four, or both. You oh, never know. That's true. Um, with trample. so, uh, with my hint earlier with the sun, I what got approach get? of the second sun as my rare. Um, a funny card, not a card I'm gonna pick in limited. Uh, um, probably not. It's no. it's terrible in limited. Um, so with no. that out of the way. <laughs> Are you going to make a case for this? I've seen it win a match in competitive limited. Okay, one match. <laughs> yes, literally one. <laughs> okay, so it's win percentages. <laughs> not good. Not good. Okay. So it's bad, not terrible. Yeah. Sir, check so yourself. First pickable stuff. Mm. Uh, this pack isn't great, although it's got a few picks. Um, Shafet Monitor, I think, is a great uh, bomb slash cycler. Yeah. Um, it's a great cycler in that it ramps you, but it is also just a playable bomb uh, sure. late game if you need it to be. Um, Naga Vitalist isn't something I'd be happy first picking necessarily. Definitely not. But it is a decent limited card. Uh, it gets you to your stuff faster. Um, other cards that I'd hope would wheel, probably. Uh, Colossipede, I just like. 5-5 five, five no, for fine. 5. Yeah. It's decent stats, it's good. Um, another card that I actually have been really impressed with is Cursed Minotaur. Uh, a 3-2 three, mm-hmm. for 3 with Menace, which just gives it some extra evasion. Yeah. Um, it's got a decent power, uh, so it's it's going to get in for a little bit of damage. Um, I really like any of these, but I think my pick would be Shafet Monitor. I agree. Down. Um, Curse Minotaur, usually he hits the board. He is a, just a problem. He's yeah. an annoyance. Um, Very much so. 
Um, but I think the monitor is definitely the better way to go. Yeah. Getting a bomb is always well. It's a bomb and yeah. it's a ramp card and it's a Good cycler. Day. I mean, it's it's a Good lot day. of what you want in limited, yeah. um, and that's what you want. You want those value creatures as much as possible. Sure. So sure thing, man. That's uh, that's my takeaway. I like it, guys. We talked about a lot of stuff. We did. We Drawing went cards. at length about card advantage. Well, yes, longer but, than I thought it would be. Well, actually. we spilled a little bit over into. Um, Planeswalker well, yeah, shenanigans. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that another day. Yeah, we will. <laughs> um, we'll talk about our top five Planeswalkers. And if Tabalt's not at the top of the list, then we did something wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, this has been the Filler Fun Day episode. We hope you guys enjoyed this uh, somewhat brief discussion on card advantage. <laughs> Hopefully, slash planeswalkers. Some of it was helpful. Some of it um, just got you thinking, wheels churning, all that nonsense. Yeah. Um, cool. Just some stuff to think about when deck building or yes. metagame calls, things like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, But with that out of the way, again, thank you to you guys for our feedback and our support. Thank you to Grand Slam for the sponsorship. Huge thank and, you. And uh, yes, we look sir. forward to the next episode coming out tomorrow. Um, we've Monday. got some deck techs for you. It um, is vintage. Vintage, right. yes, I believe that's correct. So, very, very cool decks coming at you. With all of this whole episode out of the way, taken care of, my name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves. 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 <laughs>